Hello, my name is Ben and on this YouTube channel I document my own print-on-demand journey. Today I'd like to talk about KDP because it's May and I can give you an April sales update. First of all, I get very consistent growth now month after month on my KDP journey in my KDP business. April was my best month so far and I hope I can motivate you with this video also to sell no or low content books on Amazon KDP because it really works also in 2021. And also I would com like to combine this sales update with, a, um, with some tips and tricks about how you can use keywords to increase your sales and how keywords work on Amazon. Now, as you might know, if you upload to KDP, you can put keywords into different sections. And on KDP, it's quite special because you have these seven keyword sections, where they, which are for your keywords and where you can put your keywords in. Now, when I started KDP, I only used one of these sections and only put one keyword in. Now, I know today that this was a waste of space and I'd like to explain how I do this now and how I've optimized the process. So, and I believe this has generated additional sales. Now, first of all, let's have a quick look at the sales. Now, I have made 14 sales, I believe, in April. Let's just count it quickly. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten and four at the end of the month. So that makes 14 sales in total on Amazon KDP, um, which is not massive, but I've had growth month after month now. So I started in started to upload in December, um, had no sale in December, but I've had my first sales in January, three sales in January, I've had five sales in February, I've had 10 sales in March and 14 sales in April. And I believe if I carry on uploading, I will get more and more sales month after month. And as I optimize my process, that should boost my sales as well. So hopefully I will, uh, that will put me into a great position for quarter four, but also for the month and the years um, going forward. Now I price all my books um, $6.90 and also in euros, it's the same price in British pounds as well, because I don't bother with um, changing prices for each marketplace. I upload automatically using an automated uploader, which is called Flying Upload KDP. And I've recently published a video that takes you through my entire process. But today I'd like to talk about, especially about keywords, because I've changed my process slightly from when I started to upload um, to KDP and I'm using keywords differently now. Now you might already do that. You know, I only recently started this print on demand and KDP journey. I'm still learning, so I want to tell you on this channel very openly and honestly what I've learned, the mistakes I've made, you know, all my mistakes, my learnings, my successes, so really that you can use them as well to grow your own business. And this increase in sales month after month, it just shows that what I'm doing is working. Obviously, there are other strategies as well, which might work as well, which might even work better. So I, on this channel, I can only talk about my own experiences, and my own journey. Now, before I show you how to upload a cover or how to upload a book to KDP using Flying Upload KDP, in Creative Fabric, you can actually download KDP covers as well. And if you're subscribed, you can even use these covers without changing them. Now, I always recommend changing them, and that's what I do as well, because if you change them, you can even use, leave them uploaded, even if you ever unsubscribe from Creative Fabrica. Because if you stay subscribed, you can continue to use the covers and the designs as they are on Creative Fabrica and leave them online. But if you ever unsubscribe, then you have to take it down if you haven't changed the design. Now, I've never really used a patent design, as you can see here. But as you can see, they've got a lot of already ready-made KDP covers optimized for 120 pages. And I found that quite interesting because all of my designs or all of my um, my books that I upload to KDP, they have 120 pages as well. So I found that quite funny. I think um, it seems to be like standard page size. So just a tip for you, if you wanna upload lined notebook journals, then 120 pages might be the way to go for you. And with regards to size, I always recommend six by nine inches just because it's a standard size. And if you look for a lined notebook on Amazon KDP, many of them have six by nine inches. So if you're interested in using Creative Fabrica, you can check the link out in the description. I really love using this website. That's why I recommend it. 
it has generated additional sales for me, also in print on demand, because I use a lot of their designs and as well, which are uploaded to the website. I download them, re-upload them to Canva, create my own designs, and then I upload them to the print on demand websites. All right, so this is one of the designs here, which I've now found on Creative Fabrica and downloaded. And it's actually a t-shirt design. I think they haven't optimized it for KDP, but it doesn't really matter. With KDP, you can just put any design really onto the book cover or layout. And, um, you know, I, I normally use all my designs that are created for t-shirts and that are actually optimized for t-shirts as well and put them onto a KDP lined notebook journal. And, you know, if it sells, great, then I've got a sale. If it doesn't sell, okay, that's not great, but at least I haven't done any additional work or at least I've kept the additional work minimal um, because I've had the design already. And I think it's perfect. It's a perfect combination of income streams to combine print on demand and KDP because they are very similar. You use very similar or even the same tools to create the designs and chances are for uploading, you use a very similar tool as well or the same tool or you just upload manually, but then at least you haven't created an additional design. You can just use the designs that you already have. All right, so when we when it comes to filling in all this information, so this is Flying Upload KDP, the automated upload tool, but you can do this when you upload manually. You just fill this information in on the KDP website. Now, I've actually never uploaded manually, so I'm not an expert in manual uploading, but I can um, I can tell you what sort of information you would put in. It doesn't matter if you use this upload tool or if you do it manually. The sections that you find on KDP on the website, if you upload manually, they are the same. So there are three sections really where you can put keywords in when it comes to um, putting keywords into KDP. The first one and the very important one is the title. The second one, very important one, is the subtitle. And the third section or set of sections are these keyword sections here. Now there are seven of them in total and as far as I know Amazon doesn't really index for keywords that you put into the description but bear in mind keywords you should still put keywords into the description because um, Google will index for them right so that is quite important but still if you if you talk about Amazon I think the most important places to put keywords in are the title, the subtitle, and the keyword sections. Now, you need to be careful with what you put into the title because the title, I've heard that if you don't put into the title what you can actually see or read on the book cover, it might get rejected. Now, I've never had a rejection on KDP, but that might be because I've always just used what is on the title. Now, if you have a lot of text on the title, you can be quite lucky because then chances are most of your keywords are already in the title. But just to keep, to keep it safe, to play it safe, I always put um, into the title what is on the book cover. Now, that might be wrong. If you think that's not the case, let me know in the section, in the comment section, because then if I can put additional keywords into the title, I'm happy to do so. But I would normally just put in I love the 80s and that's what it is that's i wouldn't put any more into the title but obviously there is the subtitle section which will also appear in bold on the amazon website now what i would normally put in here is for example lined notebook journal so all of these are already keywords because somebody might look for a 80s lined notebook journal and then i can carry on with um six by nine inches by nine inches 120 pages 80s music 80s lover so things like that you can just put in right um, music cassette retro vintage and you have a lot more um, digits that you can actually use so you could make this much longer but what you could do here is you can put some long tail keywords in, full sentences, which include various keywords. And that's what I recommend, and that's what I'm doing. You can also put a few single keywords in there, but something like Light Notebook Journal or even 80s Music Light Notebook Journal, that might be a good choice, yeah? So things like that. And then in the description, 
I would sometimes repeat that here, um, but also have, yeah, just a few more single keywords. Explain again that it's a line notebook journal, 120 pages, maybe for exercise or for documenting something. So that's what I put into the description. And then with regards to the keywords. Now in the past, what I would have done in the past, or very much in the beginning of my KDP journey, I would just have put in 80s music here. Maybe another time, 80s here. Maybe retro here, maybe music cassette into this one. Now I know now that this is actually a waste of space. So what you can do here is 80s music, lover, retro, maybe dance, vintage, music, because you've got 50 digits for every of these sections. Yeah. So you can even say, you can even write it out, 80s music, musician. Yeah. So you can fill in this space with individual keywords. Now, I don't normally um, separate them in any way. So I just use a space to separate them. And I don't put long tail keywords in here normally. So I would normally put in only short tail single, wor uh, single words now. And I think the line, the long tail keywords should be like in the subtitle, but this is up to you. This is just my way of doing it. Now you can obviously also put your long tail keywords in here. Now I use um, Flying Upload KDP, so they already have a keyword generator. So I could put in 80s music here and then a lot of the keywords come up that you can use 80s music, cool, not sure about gothic though, because it's not really related. So you always need to put related keywords in any way, but yeah, band, pop, indie, um, music collection, 1980s, which is which I wouldn't have thought of now, 1980s, music vinyl, guitar, 80s song, stereo. So yeah, there's some really good ideas that you could put in here like stereo, 1980s, maybe even pink if someone's looking for pink. And, and this is what I would normally do. Now, if you have other ideas or other tips, let me know. But I think it is a waste to, and that's what I've done, my mistake I've done in the past. Just use these sections for individual keywords. But in reality, you can use them for individual keywords, but you, you want to put various individual keywords into each section, into each section, because it just is a waste of space if you don't fill all these sections with keywords. Now, sometimes there might not just not be more keywords. You might not require more keywords, but I recommend you put various individual keywords into these sections and you definitely use them. You fill them up if you can. Now, I hope you liked the video. If you did, then please smash the like button. And if you want to follow me on my print on demand journey, then subscribe to the channel. Thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next video. Bye.